Good afternoon. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join Donna Kay and I to learn about the real estate transaction for those over 50. For those of you who watched last month's webinar on avoiding chaos when downsizing and moving, you know that one of the ways I suggest doing that as a senior is by hiring a senior's real estate specialist as your realtor to help you sell your home. So we're so glad that you are here with us today. Take a moment and say hello in the chat and tell us where you're joining us from as we wait for all attendees to join. I see about half of the attendees registered on with us so far. So thank you so much for joining us on time. Again, just let us know um, in the chat, just say hello and tell us where you're joining us from today. And as you do, we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Nicole Raymer. I am a certified professional organizer and a certified senior move manager and the founder of Organized Haven. We are an A-plus accredited moving, downsizing, and home organizing company serving Polk County seniors and their families and busy professionals since 2013. I started um, this company at a time in which I was experiencing an overwhelming transition as a new mom, uh, working far away from home, living in an extremely small space. It was 880 square feet uh, here locally in Auburndale. And um, just the amount of things that we collect in our lifetimes, you know, for one, that's what we're gonna talk about a little today but just alone in becoming a mom and collecting all of the clothes and the toys and everything that enters your home when you start a family, um, especially in a small space. I was an organized person just by nature, but that kind of transition just throws you into a situation in which you've kind of got to figure things out again and get reorganized and you know just be able to live your life in a way that is, not driving you crazy every single day when you come home from a long day at work. Uh, so that's just a little bit about how I started uh, as a professional organizer in the beginning. But then joining me on this journey in 2016 is my husband, Danny, who's also now a certified senior move manager and the co-owner of Organized Haven. <laughs> and yes, he was my husband first. Uh, so many of our clients asked us this question when we used to work in their homes together, and I tell people now that he is my husband still, since we no longer work in the field together. <laughs> so if anybody else works with their spouse, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, give us one word in the chat to describe that experience. But in all seriousness, I love, Danny and I love what we built together, and we really enjoy being partners in everything. Organized Haven has a team of professional organizers and senior move managers who are trained and experienced members of NAPO, which is the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals, and NASM, the National Association of Senior and Specialty Move Managers. Uh, a mouthful. <laughs> we are also NASM at home specialists helping seniors age in place in their very own Organized Haven. You can learn more about our services and our team at organizedhaven.com. Donna Kay. Hi, everyone. I am Donna Kay Dinkins, your senior real estate specialist. I'm with Focus Group Florida at Keller Williams in downtown Lakeland. And I'm married with three boys. My oldest is 28. And I have two granddaughters and a cat named Benjamin Franklin. I've lived in Lakeland, Florida for almost seven years. Um, I moved from the Midwest to be closer to the beaches and to enjoy warmer weather year round. My father's parents uh, were snowbirds, so I was um, able to travel back and forth with them and um, enjoy uh, summers and spring breaks. So people ask me all the time, well, what is your, uh, which beach is your favorite beach? And I always say the one that's not raining. <laughs> so um, my grandparents, they did play a very important role in my childhood, and I have a fond desire to befriend older adults and seniors. And prior to real estate, I did work um, in home care as a companion, home health aide, 
So I really do understand the needs of the aging population and respect their desire to want to be um, living independently as a senior. And that's why I'm designated working with the 50 and older senior population. As we go through this webinar and you think of questions pertaining to the content shared, please type them in the Q&A section, not the chat window. So thank you again, Donna, for joining us today. Here's a quick list of the things she is going to talk about, how the real estate transaction looks different for those over 50, the lifestyle needs to consider when downsizing and selling the family home, important considerations when making a long distance transition, how a home can be adapted to age in place, the financial considerations that will affect the real estate transaction, and how a senior can integrate the sale of their home into an estate plan. Before we dig into why the real estate transaction is different for those over 50, tell us a little bit more about yourself and why you decided to become a senior's real estate specialist, Donna Kay. Absolutely, Nicole. So believe it or not, and it seems like a very, very long time, but it has gone by so quickly, for the last 30 years, since 1992, I've actually worked with seniors. I started out working with seniors as a home companion um, back in Cincinnati, Ohio for American Nursing Care while I was in college becoming uh, a biologist. I did uh, graduate with a biology degree and then I was soon a chemist. But all in that transition, um, prior to graduating, they approached me and asked me, would you like to become a nurse? We um, have these scholarships and we would like to sponsor you and put you through nursing school. And I said, well, why would I wanna do that? So I think I missed an opportunity. It's not saying that I would never go back and try nursing again. It's always been there on the back burner of maybe something else to try later um, down the road, but who knows, right? So shortly after um, graduation, um, I found my mother-in-law um, in our home she uh, was aging, she had 12 children, and uh, she just wasn't doing well living independently. Um, we would find her in her garage with her car on and the garage door closed. So shortly we decided um, we would have her come live with us. And she was diabetic, so she had some special care needs and she fell and broke her hip. So that was back in 2002. So I um, got the experience of having an adult uh, parent living with uh, my husband and myself and trying to raise a family all at the same time. Um, one of her dreams was to have a, a detached mother-in-law suite. So we were able to make that come true um, prior to two failed surgeries and her passing away only two days being able to live in that mother-in-law suite. Um, after that, my experience um, with my grandfather, he was diagnosed with um, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, um, that was in 2007. I closely helped my grandmother um, take care of him in the home and we had hospice. And in 2009, I was um, working with seniors uh, in fitness. So in 2009, I became a fitness instructor and my primary uh, helping seniors uh, with their fitness goals to help them stay upright, keep them out of the wheelchair, help them walk in their walkers and um, just general fitness and wellness is uh, is best that they could age and have that longevity. And then after that, um, 2012, my father was diagnosed with cancer. So again, going through the hospice transition as an adult child, having a parent going through that diagnosis and passing away after three months, he never got to go home. Unfortunately, he had to um, stay in the hospital. And then in 2016, um, I had transitioned to Florida full time. Uh, and I, that's when I got my certification in home health aid and worked with seniors again in group home setting um, and facilities. I was able to go out and assist uh, seniors with their care needs. And then in 2018 is when I landed uh, a job with a home care agency doing sales and marketing. So I was on the other side of home care. I wasn't actually doing the care, but I was marketing the services that I had just provided. So I got to learn a lot of housing options when I was working at the home care agency. 
And that was great transition for when I became a real estate agent in 2019. I was working part time then. And then in 2021, I decided to go full time. And that's when I got my senior real estate specialist. So for me, it was kind of like a natural progression from where I started back in 1992, all the way up until current right now, 2022. I love to hear that story, Donna. I have heard it a number of times <laughs> and I, I just can't get enough. So um, that's really important to uh, be able to uh, truly understand the people who you're helping and their needs. And so I think with everything, you know, your 30 years of experience working with seniors and your personal experience as well, you have certainly seen a fair share of changes that impact the way older adults live. Thank you. So millions of Americans are considering a large downsize for themselves or helping someone who is. As a seniors real estate specialist, you understand that the real estate transaction for those over 50 looks different than it does for younger families. Can you share with us some examples of how? Well, absolutely. I can tell you three things, uh, lifestyle changes and financials and their ability to live independently in the home. So if we go back to looking at the lifestyle changes, uh, they're no longer raising a family. They might be transitioning out of raising some grandchildren, or maybe their adult children have lived with them at some time, but typically they're independent, they're on their own, um, they're ready to retire. So we're looking at the, tra the transition of moving out of caring for a family now being independently and kind of almost like living their life the way that they want to without having the additional responsibilities of anyone else to care for. Um, so moving out of the family home might be one of those. Um, downsizing or right sizing say maybe the family home was a four bedroom and now they want something a little smaller so now they're looking at maybe in a 55 plus community moving into a two bedroom with less maintenance um, maybe not a pool maybe there might be a community pool to enjoy some activities um, but not having the responsibility of the upkeep um, or maybe they're in their um, stage of life where they have health care issues their chronic issues and they're I'm not able to live at home anymore. So they might be moving into an assisted living um, where they can get some extra additional um, help with their bathing and feeding and medication needs. Um, or maybe um, they're looking to live with an adult child. So that can look a couple different ways. Um, you've heard of ADUs, accessory dwelling units. So they can be attached or they can be unattached like a tiny house. So what we are seeing is either mom moving in with her adult children and they are building the ADU tiny house in their backyard or maybe converting a garage into a mother-in-law suite or vice versa. We're seeing the adult children move in with mom and then doing that tiny house in the back of mom's house. Um, especially what's important about that is if she does a reverse mortgage, because she does have to be on the deed of the house in order to be able to qualify for that reverse mortgage. So that's kind of an interesting scenario. Um, some other um, housing options um, could be independent or memory care or something that is called a CCRC, um, Continuing Care Retirement Community, that allows you to transition your care needs as your level of care increases. Um, so when we're looking at this, sometimes the adult children may be in the process. We have to consider the family members. Sometimes uh, they don't have any children at all. Um, or sometimes they're moving back from Florida to up north to go live in assisted living or with adult children. Um, so when we see those multi-generations, well, most of the time we see uh, adult children involved in the decision process, whose money is going to um, be involved? Is it mom's money? Is it our money? So there's some considerations. Um, so we're trained as senior real estate specialists to be able to point out um, and help our customers uh, have options of where they want to live their next um, experience, uh, their next journey in life. And that can look so different as I just got done telling you. And so going to the financial needs, um, hopefully as you're aging, you've done a really good job um, setting up your finances so that you um, have to worry less about uh, selling your home first before purchasing that new home. But that's not always the case. Um, sometimes seniors are more so on a limited budget 
um, they have to worry about how the transaction of selling a home is going to impact um, Medicare, maybe even possibly do they qualify for Medicaid. And this is especially if they have any chronic illnesses um, where they're looking at doing home care in the home or even transitioning to assisted living because Medicare does not pay for assisted living. Um, and so we try to help our clients and customers understand um, that we have to look at their budgets to see what um, was their best move. But many times that's left up to the family and we need to see this, no one to step back. Um, some other financial things to think about is how you're gonna pay for the new house. Um, maybe it's um, a reverse mortgage, uh, or maybe it's a home equity line of credit to make a down payment, or maybe it's a down payment into an assisted living facility. But the idea is that we give enough variety of choices to reduce the out-of-pocket expenses, gain cash, and create or defer income streams so that they can still live independently and um, obtain financial assistance if they need it. Some wow. other options. Um, Go ahead. That's good. <laughs> Are you sure? Um, we do have some other options as well, like home swaps. So if they do need to sell their house first, um, they don't have the budget or liquidality to where they can purchase a new home before selling their other home. We do have a program called Home Swap. It is for qualified properties. And so that's always an option as well. Great. Yeah, the, the list of reasons of why um, the real estate transaction looks so different for a senior and their family even. Um, it's just so overwhelming that all of their options and the choices that they face. So um, this sums it up really just in one uh, answer that you're providing, but I know you have so much more to share. Uh, and clearly our needs evolve over time. There are many moving parts when moving, but the lifestyle needs of a senior who is downsizing makes this experience different than all the other times that they may have moved before. So how might a senior consider their lifestyle needs when downsizing and selling their family home? Well, I would hope typically you would need less. There's um, less people in the home. So um, when you get to a point in life where you need less, there's less to store, less to clean. So it becomes more um, a maintenance-free home. So when we're looking at the move, um, as a senior real estate specialist, we do understand that there might be 30 years worth of stuff in the house that has to be moved out first before you can list that house. And um, we don't want to be putting our clients in a situation where they have to box everything up in a quick hurry, put it in storage, and then maybe never even open that box again or even know what's inside the boxes just because it was haphazardly put into the um, storage. So we, don't, we want to encourage them to only have to move once. Um, and then maybe sell unnecessary items, um, have estate sales, or maybe give family heirlooms to the children. So the idea is that we're definitely trying to create a better living situation. So if they're downsizing or right sizing, um, typically that house is going to be updated from where they're living currently, um, especially if it was a family home that they lived in for many years. So that you're looking at newer appliances, the new roof, the new windows. Um, less housing maintenance, but they're still able to stay independently. Um, they may or not want a pool. Um, that's a liability. And so they may might want to find a house that doesn't have a pool. Or maybe they want to move into uh, an HOA community where lawn care in, is included. And so they have more of a, that maintenance free living, such as a 55 plus community. And then um, trusted resources for downsizing and aging in place. This is where I reach out to my senior network. Um, I have a volunteer heart. So I'm not just selling the home. This is the family home. And I um, wanna make sure that every part of the way of their journey into their, their next forever home, um, that I have the resources to um, provide them if anything ever comes up. So um, some of my experience is I'm vice president of Better Living for Seniors. It's an organization of senior serving businesses and I've been past member um, membership chair. I'm also a member of Lakeland Chamber of Commerce. 
there's plenty of other senior serving businesses in there as well. For example, um, if they want to age in place, I know of an inspection company that's certified in senior safety home inspections. So that could help them decide whether they want to put a ramp or grab bars to make their house more uh, senior safety and age in place. Um, there's plenty of nonprofits in our community um, and senior programming that I'm familiar with. I attend a lot of their meetings, um, Wrath Connections, Catholic Charities, um, Senior Connections Center, VISTI, Meals on Wheels, Mid Florida Community Services. So if they need any um, state help, and then a Center for Independent Living. Um, and then we also have our Senior Medical Center. So here just in Lakeland, we have a variety of resources to help the senior um, and their lifestyle needs and making sure that every part of that journey of selling the family home is taken care of. For sure. It's, we, we live in um, the best county in Florida, for sure. We have the best senior serving professionals. So thank you so much for being one of them and for all that you do for our community. I'm so proud to know, like, and trust you as one of my trusted resources. You're welcome. Thank you. So by now, it might be obvious how real estate selling is different for downsize in estate situations. How about long distance moves? Is there anything important to consider when making such a transition? Yes. And the biggest thing you want to consider is the cognitive decline or what we call relocation stress syndrome. So no matter what age you are, you're going to feel a little bit of this, but more so as a senior or someone maybe who has a chronic illness or memory issues, or maybe even early signs of dementia, um, the cognitive decline is real. So whether you're moving across the street or into another state, anytime you change your living arrangements, it's going to, um, your senior is going to experience some type of cognitive decline. It's going to be harder for them to find the restroom. It's going to be harder for them to find the bathroom um, because they lived in their house for so many years and sometimes, you know, 20, 25 years, maybe 30 years. Um, they're on autopilot when they're going to the restroom at night. So now they have to relearn uh, that, that floor plan or maybe if it's an assisted living, now it's not just them that they have to consider it's their entire living staff that they're they're considering um, when leaving and coming and going out of their room and such so um, i had a client just recently who sold her home in florida and she does not have any children and she decided on her own that she was going to move back up to illinois and she um, did have some chronic illnesses so she did have to move into assisted living and she was cognitive quite cognitive enough to know that she had to make all these arrangements um, to transition into assisted living. She had to um, get all of her belongings sold, only take what she was gonna need. And she was in a family home, what we call a family home for over 30 years. And um, so, and I went to the estate sale and, and it's, it's heartbreaking especially since she didn't have any children of all the things that she's had collected over the years, all the memories that was in the house and she was widowed. And so to her, it was her husband's house. It was her husband's money, her husband's house. So you have to understand that whole generation too. Um, this was not her house that she was selling. She was selling her husband's house. And so there's a lot of emotion that goes in that she's reliving, you know, being widowed and her husband passing, her husband's not there. So you can just imagine her mindset. So when she did get back to Illinois, um, her uh, advocate, I could say for um, good word, she explained to me that it took her about three weeks to recover from that move. She wasn't eating well. Um, she had declined mobility. They didn't know if she was gonna be able to walk. Um, and keep in mind, she chose this for herself. A lot of times the family, the adult children are choosing to take mom out of the family home and either put them in assisted living or bring them in to their home. Again, that multi-generational household. But she did recover because I did get to talk to her and, she, and it was um, after the three weeks, um, I let her settle in and I just asked her, you know, how are things going? And she said, things were going great. So that's what you always wanna hear at the end of a move is that it was a great move, everything went great. But she did share with me too that it, it, she did struggle um, for those three weeks. 
So it was nice to be able to know that she did recover well. Yes, I remember you telling me that story. And the last time we talked about it, I didn't know that. I, um, you didn't know the update yet. So that's so good to hear that, you know, she made it through. Uh, yes. She is safely in her new home. And, you know, most of all that she um, is able to continue living life. You know, um, these are hard transitions and not one matches the other. I've heard many of your client stories that you've shared. Um, I have uh, some of my own. Um, I'm thinking of one in particular, uh, going back to your conversation about cognitive decline um, several years ago, and we've worked with this family a couple of times. Um, it was husband and wife. I believe they were in their 70s. And, um, you know, dementia can strike as young as 35. So, um, it's a horrible, horrible disease. And um, so in terms of the bathrooms, that, that conversation that you just had, I was there um, with my team packing and, you know, a couple of the conversations that took place with um, the husband, the gentleman with dementia, he, um, you were repeated. And so we find that often when we're working with the senior population, especially those with any form of cognitive decline. Um, but the question that he stated in particular that just continues to sit with me today is, honey, can you point me in the right direction of the bathroom? And so of course I did. And, you know, we, um, you know, treat, um, that person with cognitive decline with as much respect as you would any other person. They're not a child, you know, they've lived a long, uh, healthy life. And, but it's so hard to hear that. And um, at the end of the move, when we uh, got him and his wife to their new home, it wasn't a long distance move, um, but it was to a different city. And when we were done setting up their new home, he said to his wife, and I just happened to be there and over here, um, how long are we staying here? This is so beautiful. And, you know, these were all of the things that he has lived with for years. Um, and so it's such a challenging transition, uh, some of these especially more than others. Um, and so it's really special to be able to be a part of it truthfully and make the transition a little less overwhelming and a little more enjoyable. Nicole, you reminded me of another story. Um, when I was working in home care, um, I was working with a lady. It was in a smaller setting than a facility. There was six bedrooms in a home and it's assisted living. And she came to us um, from her brother she uh, moved out of a family home, but she was a hoarder and she had a lot of clothing from my understanding and her brother sorted through it and only brought her with less than a week's worth of clothing. And it was a struggle um, for me. It was more heartbreaking because every morning, because I would stay with them, feed them dinner and stay with them overnight and then help them with their bath and get them ready for breakfast in the morning. Um, she would go through her closet looking for certain things that she knew that she had, but could not find. So it was really hard for her to start her morning every day because she didn't have the clothes that she wanted, that she knew that she had. And she soon did. Um, start with dementia and then she would be confused. And she's like, I know that I had these at my other house, but they're just not here. And I'm not sure why I can't remember where they're at. So she started to get to where she couldn't remember why she was even um, at assisted living. So I got to see that decline rapidly happen. So um, it doesn't necessarily have a slow prog progress when you see this cognitive, um, decline from the move, it can happen very quickly. They can be very sound of mind, but within just weeks, months, um, be to where they are not able to function with, without an aid. Mm -hmm. It's really, really hard. Yep, for sure. 
Thank you for sharing those stories, Donna. I'm sure you might think of some others as we go on here. So, of course, older adults often wish to remain independent for as long as possible. And for many reasons, they'd love to stay in their family home versus moving to a senior living community or making other living arrangements. So how can a home be adapted to age in place in a scenario like that? Sure. So um, looking at things like grab bars, widening doors, uh, maybe a ramp. Um, this is where I, again, would reach out to my trusted resources. And then you also have to know if they're going into a community that has guidelines. You know, sometimes it might have certain building materials. Um, obviously, you're going to need to get some permits, um, knowing uh, what guidelines there are. And then with trusted resources, I um, know in our community here, VISTI does help with installation of ramps. And then we also have Center for Independent Living. They help with ramps as well, the grab bars. So um, getting back to that safety, that senior safety home inspector, they can actually uh, suggest where to put the grab bars and possibly widen doors, or um, maybe it's the transition strip that needs to be fixed between carpet and tile. Um, and they have a list that they go through, a, a safety checklist that can be given to the family so they know how to adapt the home so it's more age friendly. Um, another thing would be handles on the doors. So if you think of the louver handles versus the twist knobs, so uh, seniors do have start to lose the ability to feel in their fingers, especially if they're diabetic, they might have neuropathy. Um, and it's just easier to do the lever door versus um, a, a round circle where you're trying to twist that wrist. Um, and um, again, maybe it's a multi-generational home where you're going to have multi-generations uh, in the home. So there's some considerations there too and being mindful of throw rugs and um, knowing that those are trip hazards. And the last thing we wanna do is have a senior fall because falling and breaking your hip, um, we know is not is not a good thing at all. So the statistics are that, and this was told to me by my mother-in-law's uh, doctor, that 50% of the seniors that fall will, will pass just due to the fall. Um, they could hit their head, they could have a brain bleed, um, something other underlying is going on to cause that fall, or maybe it's um, osteoporosis that it, they didn't break their hip on the fall, maybe they broke their hip um, prior to falling. And then the statistic goes on to say that those 50% that do live through that hip um, fracture die of complications. So um, it's a very high risk of mortality when a senior falls. Um, when I was working in home care, um, it wasn't my client, but the family didn't realize that um, their father had a, had a brain bleed and they left him sitting in a chair for a couple of days thinking he was just recovering from the fall. And so he did have a hemorrhage and he did pass um, because the, the children didn't recognize that when a trained person, such as a home health aide or a CNA or a nurse, they would know that anytime a senior falls, it's an immediate 911 call. You do not hesitate to call 911. It's, it's, it's an immediate 911 call. So making sure that those seniors are safe in their home when they're aging in place is very, very, very important. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all of my seniors want their throw rugs, every one of them. <laughs> so it's always it's a small animals. we want to have. Small animals? Small oh, animals yes. will cause trips too. And wow. so um, unfortunately, uh, those pesky little little ones, <laughs> and big ones too, yeah. they can run you over, but. Yep, they want to be right under your feet, no matter how old you are. <laughs> Oh, wow. You know, um, I just thought I'd mention too, I love how Focus Group Florida has options for those who intend on making their homework for them for years to come. You know, um, as a seniors real estate specialist and a realtor, you know, working with Focus Group Florida, you're not just focused on selling the house, you know, um, and making that commission. You know, you're really thinking about the needs of that senior and their wishes. 
and where they really want to live and where they could be safest living and how. So well, just I thought I'd throw that, that in. That is, a, that is a good point because almost everyone who works in healthcare and with seniors want them to have the quality of life. And we have this thing called age in place. And aging in place might be the family home or it might be an assisted living um, or um, independent living. The idea is that we're trying to slow that progression down. So that is our goal is to have a quality of life. Um, so there is no rush on selling the family home. We know it's a slower process um, because we are thinking of every step of the way. And sometimes with having a home that old, once we get to the title searches, there's some complications as well as in transfers and such. Um, but one thing is with Focus Group Florida, there is another company called Focus Homes and they um, do build the tiny homes, they do the remodels and also the, um, the bars and the, the ramps to keep the senior aging in place at home safely. So yes, they, they are very skilled in, in keeping the senior definitely in their home. Yeah, and, and just really even so many options for anyone. Again, no matter their, their age. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, if it weren't enough, if there weren't enough reasons for the real estate transaction to look different for those over 50, you talked about this a little bit, um, but go in more detail as to the financial considerations that will affect the real estate transaction. Sure, absolutely. So here we are talking again about budget and what are the options. So one option could be a reverse mortgage um, or a HECM home equity conver conversion mortgage. I will say um, they have improved a lot. Um, there's not always a good uh feeling attached to when people hear the word reverse mortgage, but they have come a long way. They are more consumer friendly now. Um, so this is maybe how a senior would be able to stay home and age in place and pay for their in-home care. And typically they can pay for anything they want. There's two different ways you can utilize your reverse mortgage. It's either a lump sum or a monthly um, payment paid to you to help with whatever you want, your living expenses. And the word of caution I have here is if you do consider doing this HECM, uh, make sure you talk to a financial advisor first, uh, maybe your estate planner and an elder law attorney, just to know how this will impact your living situation and possibly your ben beneficiaries if you are planning on passing your house down to your children. Um, Maybe it's a second mortgage in the home, a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit. Um, somewhat like a credit card, you use the money um, as you need it, and then you pay back the bank over time. Um, so instead of borrowing that lump sum of money, you're only borrowing what you need. Now we did have a client who was able to transition into a smaller home by using the second mortgage for that down payment. And then once the house was sold, paid back the loan. So that was a good way to utilize um, the, the HELOC. Um, we also have to look at healthcare needs because um, contrary to a lot of the population belief, um, Medicare does not pay for in-home care, which is considered private duty. Um, so that is private pay. So you might wanna be looking at um, long-term care insurance or annuities. Again, going back to your financial advisor, how are you gonna pay for your healthcare needs in the future? So you're gonna need some private funds to be able to stay in the home. Um, if you or your loved one has any chronic illnesses that require additional care, um, or if you're going to live into an assisted living facility. Again, Medicare does not pay for assisted living facility that is private pay. Um, so the difference with Medicare and, and home care is that Medicare is typically used uh, after a hospital stay, an illness, surgery. It's for small bouts of time to get you rehabilitated back to stay at home, um, possibly therapy sessions at home, um, outpatient or inpatient services, especially if you've um, had hip, hip surgery. Um, 
So another interesting um, concept since we're talking about finances in the real estate transaction for over 50, cash buyers and investors. Um, seniors are very apprehensive to um, accept cash offers right now. Um, can't say it's always gonna be that way or always has been that way, but right now we have a lot of investors who are looking to purchase homes that are in disrepair um, and they might be offering 10 to $30,000 more than what the listing price is. However, seniors um, just are apprehensive to sell to cash buyers and investors. They want a family to be in their home. This is their family home and they want another family to enjoy it just as they enjoyed it. So um, what we're seeing is um, the senior feeling that it's the right thing to do and they are taking an offer less. Again, it's somewhere between 10 and $30,000. They're hopefully in a position where they um, don't need the extra cash. Um, they felt that they're, they're um, doing the right thing for their neighbors. Um, and then recently I, I read in one of our um, magazines that uh, even uh, the family's children, adult children, so if they're trying to sell the family home, they're even considering what this would do to impact the neighborhood, selling it to an investor um, looking to rent out the property rather than um, a family buying it. And then and locally, what we're seeing is a lot of our local um, people are being closed out of the transaction. Um, so a lot of families are being displaced because they're being bid out by these investors. Seniors do really care not only about their budget, but also about who's going to call their family home home next. Um, it's certainly important for them to do the right thing and not sell their home to just anyone. I'm not selling my home, but I get texts, calls, flyers in the mail, junk mail, almost every single day with offers to buy. So these vultures are out there. <laughs> All right. So not only would anyone wanna do the right thing and sell their home to a family who's going to love it as much as they did, but they also need to do the right thing for themselves and confirm they have a proper estate plan. You touched on this a little bit in your last answer, but how it, maybe in a little more detail, can a senior integrate the sale of their home in an estate plan? Sure, again, this is where I would say that again looking at how are you going to pay for living expenses are you able to going to be able to keep the upkeep keep upkeep of the home if you're doing the reverse mortgage so there are things you do have to qualify you have to be 62 and you do have to still be able to pay taxes your hoa fees and um, on top of that um, if there's anyone in the home who um, has any chronic illnesses that require home care services or if you're in and out of the hospital how will all these living expenses be paid will you have the money um, to maintain an age in place at home so if you're looking at the reverse mortgage um, or any other um, loans such as the HELOC making sure that um, it is set up in a way that when you do pass that your beneficiaries can uh, keep the home if that's what your wishes and desires are. And that's where you're going to want to make sure you consult with a financial planner, maybe even an elder law attorney, uh, because those loans will have to be paid back prior to the sale of the house. And right. The other question is, is um, if they're selling their home and planning on moving into like uh, assisted living, we talked a little bit about the CCRs, the continuing um, care retirement um, communities, will they have enough money to sustain that life? So again, because it is private private um, pay, um, meaning that you have to pay cash, um, it's not a medical expense, it's not um, Medicare's responsibility. Um, will there be enough money after the sale of the home to maintain your lifestyle? 
these are scary questions. <laughs> they're, so, they're so important, these matters. The right answers are needed early in the process. So um, I appreciate you sharing all of that. It's great that you have a network of professionals that offer these answers and solutions. You know, we can't do it all, right? So Right, by no means am I an expert outside my field. And that's why I heavily count on my senior resource network is that I call it. And so knowing who they, who those people are and how they service um, and what their services are really helps me a lot be able to serve my my client if there's a need that arises that I can't help them with. Absolutely. And these are reasons why I rely on you and refer you <laughs> to our seniors who are selling their homes because I know not only are you going to do the right thing, but you know others who are also going to do the right thing. So thank you for sharing that in your circle with us. <laughs> so um, this has been so informational. Donna Kay, what are some final tips that you have for a senior considering downsizing and selling their home before we get to Q&A? So absolutely. Again, I just want to say as a senior real estate specialist, I'm one who understands the lifestyle needs, the financial needs of a senior who is looking um, either to buy their forever retirement home or to downsize out of the family home, whether it's into assisted living, multi-generational or 55 plus community. Um, some things to consider um, in the title process, making sure that it's very thoughtful. Um, it's not a hurried process. None of the transactions in real estate is a hurried process. We all have to go through the the title searches. So some of the things that you might want to be aware of on these title searches, especially if the home was passed from a parent to a child, maybe it was in a quick deed. Huh. Um, so making sure that it was done properly because that could slow the process of the sale of the home and the um, home might have to go through probate. So making sure that every step of the way you can help your client knowing that there could be some barriers um, when the senior moves um, out of state before you sell the house. You're going to um, have to have mobile notaries and legal couriers to help with the documents. Now, this one particular lady, she had email, but she had a flip phone, so she didn't have it on mm -hmm. her phone. <laughs> and she just moved into assisted living. She did not have a computer. Um, so it wasn't just as simple as, let me email you some documents. Um, so there does become some challenges, but they're um, always um, easily um, overcome. Uh, this isn't the first time or last time that we're gonna have these kind of challenges. Um, one of the other things um, we're seeing is the age of the roof. So if the buyer can't get homeowner's insurance, um, the seller is gonna be responsible for replacing that roof before they can sell the home. Um, so when we're looking at these family homes, anything over 10 years, um, we definitely need to ad address the roof um, because that could prevent the sale of the home. Um, and were the permits pulled? So making sure that all the permits were pulled, that the homeowner um, uh, didn't do their own repairs without permits that were necessary. So that could also slow mm. down the process of a home. Um, being sold, is the electric or plumbing up to date? Um, what, what are the age of the utilities? Um, the air conditioner, the cool pumps. Um, another big one is um, if the, the parent was a hoarder, do you, we need to get um, a moving company to come out and clean out all of the heaps and piles of stuff that was kept? Um, and then finally, like if the senior has uh, memory issues or challenges, do we need to get a POA involved? Um, so a power of an attorney. And then if they didn't have any children and there was any problems in the process, who do you contact next? Who would be the next in line to help you through the sale of the, of the home? Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much for sharing all of this knowledge with our audience today. This has been great. Like I said, um, I've received you know bits and pieces from your client stories and uh, of your knowledge and different presentations over the years that you've given. So um, there's just never enough to learn. 
um, there's always something new and um, it's just so deep the impact that downsizing and selling a home has on a senior and their loved ones who are trying their very best to help them with the process um, you know and they don't have all of the answers and they need to know who to go to for them so this has been great and we have come to the last 10 minutes of the presentation in which there's some time for questions and answers so if any of you who are on with us today live have questions regarding selling over 50, um, the lifestyle changes that Donna Kay shared with us, as well as financial needs or healthcare needs, any of those that you see on the screen, um, we have some time to leave those in the Q&A. Maybe uh, Donna, you can certainly um, add your information in the chat if anybody wanted to give you a call when this is over and um, ask you privately. You know, we understand that it might be um, something very unique to you that you don't necessarily um, even know right now what you might ask. So uh, stay tuned for Donna's information in the chat. I don't see any questions now, but we'll come back to them if we see any. I just want to leave you otherwise with next, next month's webinar. I do a webinar once per month. And next month, I'll present Chaos to Order, Downsizing Your Paper Documents. Because among all of the things that are in our homes are piles and files that, in order to not feel like you are under a growing mountain of paperwork, need to be dealt with, whether moving or not. So stay tuned on our Facebook page for the registration link for this event. Uh, it will be on Wednesday, June 29th at 1 p.m. Can you believe we are already to the middle of 2022? So expect six more webinars from Organized Haven. Uh, we love to get um, additional panelists in uh, with us to share uh, some of the other things that relate to downsizing and moving. And again, not all of those are our specialty. So we rely heavily too on our senior resource network. Um, but next month, it'll be me, myself, and I uh, sharing that journey of downsizing your paper documents. In the meantime, find more free professional tips and resources on our blog at organizedhaven.com. There you will find an abundance of moving, downsizing, and organizing tips that will be sure to give you all the guidance you need. And expect to see a guest post from Donna Kay in the near future. We've been working on that too, having some local guests join in on the conversation on the blog. You can find more information about us and our services by visiting organizedhaven.com as well. And in fact, as this webinar closes, you'll automatically be directed there if you have some time to peruse. You can also contact us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Uh, if you need a certified senior move manager, find one near you at nasm.org. You can also find a certified professional organizer near you at napo.net. And then stay tuned in addition for the next scheduled webinar, others and, and blog posts um, that we post uh, every other week or so by subscribing to our newsletter on the homepage of our website. In the meantime, I hope you learned a lot in today's webinar. I hope to see you again next month. Uh, Donna has left her information in the chat, and I think we might have a question. Here we go. Heather, thank you so much for your question. How do you work with a client that wants to hold on to sentimental items when knowing there is not enough space in their new living environment? I think that one might be for me, Donna. I was going to say, I'm <laughs> going to have to defer that to my trusted uh, advisor who oh. is specialized in senior moves. <laughs> Glad to ahead, share. Nicole. Yes. You know, the sentimental items, I always suggest <clears throat> waiting until last. It's really the first thing that comes to mind 
when a senior or really any of us, this applies to any of us, when we are looking through our homes, when we intend on getting organized um, and we touch anything in our home, there's this memory that's attached to it. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it really spurs a lot of guilt just to consider letting it go. Um, I have one client who I just, uh, let's see, I think it was two days ago um, when I was doing an on-site visit. Uh, it was a senior who has lost her husband recently and her son and her daughter-in-law uh, came here from California. So they made that trip. And I'm so glad they did because they were there um, to walk her through that journey. She was really, she is a, she is a great organizer, this senior. Um, she really didn't, she didn't live in any kind of clutter. I mean, having said that, I didn't see her home before they were there. But what I know is that um, they had already gone through that process of touching every item. I do suggest too for someone who's doing this to try not to touch it, especially if you're working with a professional organizer, let that professional organizer touch the item. Because once you touch it as the individual considering letting it go, you feel it and you feel it both in your hands and in your heart. And so it might be a good idea to not physically touch that item and have you know, an accountability partner going through this process with you, whether it's a professional or a friend or a family member. Um, but in terms of this client and her family and what they had done, she has, like we all, family photos in frames, on the walls, in drawers, in closets, you know, prior moves. Sometimes you don't get everything onto your wall in your new home. And so they may be sitting in boxes or like I said, I mean, dresser drawers. Our clients always ask us, can you move the dresser without removing the contents within? And we say, yes, so long as that dresser is sturdy, you know, that it's not going to fall apart when moving, especially if there's heavy items in it, but also so long as it's really just linens, because we do find fragile items, including pictures and frames. And so going back to this client in general, whose family came from California to help her, they had already made those decisions on the frames that are being moved and being replaced on the walls. But they had all of these others that are sitting on their on her um, coffee table and on the floor and on chairs that they just don't know what to do with. Um, and so one suggestion I had for them is to take a picture of the pictures. You know, you could have a collage on your wall and you're not, you just don't have the wall space to move it, right? And so how about taking a picture of that item, whether it's a picture or whether it's, you know, a photo frame, whether it's a photo frame um, that you're not going to bring with you or it's a tchotchke, you know, something physical that you just don't have the space for. A picture speaks a thousand words and the space that a coffee table book, you know, a photo album might hold compared to the wall space, the floor space, the flat surface areas on bookshelves, for instance, it just goes a lot farther to just take a picture of that item because just because you're letting that sentimental item go, it doesn't mean you're letting the memory go. That memory still stays with you, especially if you have a book that you could open and see a picture of it and just remember that story. So I hope that answers your question, Heather. And again, it was just something recent that is top of mind that I could share with you. So it was a great question. Thanks so much. So again, Donna has left her information in the chat. Be sure to copy that down. Um, I'll even read it out loud. Her mobile phone number is the best way that I know to reach her, 863-250-2400. So thanks again, Donna, for all that you shared. Thank you for our attendees that joined us live. Um, this will be recorded and shared on Facebook as well on the Organized Haven page. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you want to be able to share it with any of your loved ones or, you know, professionals that you work with. 
and have well, a great you rest of your so day. Thank you so much, Nicole. I really do appreciate you reaching out to me and having me as one of your guest speakers. Um, very honored to share what I do. And thank you again um, for having me. And thank you You're to welcome. all the participants as well for um, your interest. And I'm happy to answer questions in the future. Just always reach out to me, um, cell phone or email. Um, you might even see me in a networking group. So for sure. feel free to approach me, ask me anything. And if I don't have the answer, I'm going to tell you, I know somebody who does. And for um, sure. I'll make sure you get put in the right direction. Thank you again, Nicole. Thank you, Donna, Thank you. very much. I'll see you at Better Living for Seniors in a few weeks. Yes. And um, I'm sure somewhere June else. 8. June, June 8th. June yes. 8th. Excellent. 8.45. <laughs> very good. Thanks so much for sharing that. All right, y'all. You're welcome. Have, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.